now with all that said about the monorail, we're on to the slingshot. Yet another silly band-powered blaster that you can get for five bucks at your local Dollar General or at Target. Different places sell it, but it is very similar to the mini crossbow. You have an actual band. This is rubber, and you pull back and fire. Silly as can be, simple as can be, and it's just a unique novel way to fling foam. And it costs about five bucks. Fun for the backyard for anybody of any age. Again, not going to hang around too much on it. But it's a fun blaster. You can't go wrong with it. You know what you're getting. Single shot front loader. Band powered. Fires just under the 70. Well, actually, some of these I've had. Because you can tighten up the band. So it actually can hit. I had one, one that hit about 75 feet per second. Straight out of the package. So it just depends on where the band is tightened but around about 67 to 75 feet per second so you're not at you're at least not at a handicap fun little blaster you might carry it on your in a pocket on your side just to mess with somebody tag them out with this and that would be at least worth a laugh but it's the Mosby slingshot now one of the blasters i mentioned this about the fact there are some blasters that are absolutely synonymous with Busby. The snipe was one of those. This is another one. You hear that familiar break and shells being loaded. You know what you're getting. It's the Busby double shot. And yes, you've got to fling the shells. You have to. It's just part of it. If you don't, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> And you should be ashamed. No, the, the double shot. This is one of my all-time favorites. And I don't care if it doesn't perform as well as something else. I don't care that shells are a bit more of a hassle. I don't care that it creaks or anything else. Because it does. It does. It's the fact that this thing has been around since basically Busby's inception. And it was one of the blasters that got me into Busby. I have one that I bought when I was like 12. And I still have it with me. I still have the thing. Actually, yeah, right here. Right here is my original one. I still have it. <laughs> that says a lot. I took care of it, though. I know some people, some people, I actually have a whole bin of them. That's where it just went. I know some people have had them break the hinge or the it's actually rope rope prime there is actually a, a little string or rope there that's what you're seeing it's white and yeah it it is antique in its design but it's still fun and it's still dirt cheap for what it is it is a double barrel this is the over under configuration that you can go get dollar general for about 12 bucks right now that's where I got this one. That's how much I paid. Like $12. So cheap still. Fun still. And now more, more people are actually making the Busby shells. Because one of those was an aftermarket shell. 3D printed and available online at Etsy. And I just, I tested out some others. The, uh, the Dan Beavercraft. Those were really good. And I actually have others. And you can just find those pretty cheaply. Busby even still sells the shells. You just have to contact them through their customer service. And you can get them through them. So it, it's fun. Having the darts go flying. And it's both the air restrictors. You're not going to really hurt this thing. But the air restrictors are in the shells. So it's going to be a little noisier. But it has a two-stage trigger. So one, two, or... Both at the same time. Fun as can be. Absolutely love the double shot. It has its flaws. But who cares? <laughs> it's fun. And it's cheap. So it's a win-win. Fun and cheap. But yeah, it, you might eventually, if you go crazy with it, you might, might break the hinge. Or you might snap a rope. But I still have mine from 2004 and I haven't done that yet. Maybe, maybe I'm being too gentle on it. But that's the Busby Double Shot. Another blaster that's been around for a long time with Busby. 
and has just seen different color changes, this is one of many colors, is the Busby Wizard. This is a four shot top prime pistol that has a rotating plunger tube instead of a smart AR, which means it will fire wherever the plunger tube sits. And I mention that because the downside of that is that you don't, if you don't remember the last time you shot the blaster, you don't know which one's gonna fire first. The upside is that it normally has a little more power available. So we'll go ahead and fire this one. And that was top left, top right, keep going around. And pop. Flings them like crazy because even despite its little tiny size, it has a pretty good plunger tube. And that revolving plunger tube makes it quite potent. It has the tiniest little grip though. <laughs> it is a stubby little grip. I don't, my bottom two fingers aren't really gripping it. So it's the Busby Wizard. It's actually going to get a updated review here going on the channel here at some point in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Nerf has its jolt. Busby has the Panther. And no, this is not the Panther of times past that was an air blaster. This is a single shot, rear prime, front firing blaster that, you know, as simple as can get. Much like the, the jolt, but instead of the jolt where it has the, the grip pull, this one has a T-pull at the back. And it's as simple as that. Very simple, very cheap. You can get like a couple of these for five bucks. So hard to go wrong. Very pocketable too, because it has a very, very smooth and little profile. So this is the perfect little single shot blaster. I actually think that this profile works better for a pocket than the Jolt, because if you, the Jolt has a chunky grip with the T-pull at the bottom of the grip, this one fits in the pocket just absolutely perfect. Probably leave it there for the rest of the video. Moving on to another blaster that's absolutely synonymous with Busby. I said that about the Snipe. I, I've said that about the Double Shot. The Predator. It's been updated. They put a new little sight with it instead of the big scope that used to come with. It still has the dart storage in the stock. And it's still a bolt action blaster that you load one dart into, seal it up, and fire. It's undersized, but it's perfect for really young users or somebody who just wants a simple little blaster to just mess around with. You can, you can just hand this off and even the youngest little user who could possibly play Nerf, they know what a bolt action is. They'll figure that out in 30 seconds. They'll be like, oh, okay. And then <laughs> there's nothing to go wrong. You stick a dart in. You push it in you can actually drop in a dart into here without pushing it in and it will load it itself there is actually a dart tooth in there so you don't have to feed it back but that becomes so instinctive that you just do it naturally and at about 10 bucks you can't go wrong with this they're rock solid reliable they're cheap they're easy to use and if you look around, if you have a bin of these and you go and host a Nerf game, like I have done personally, that has like all ages, you will see the bin of these just absolutely empty out instantly. You will see everybody grab it because they picture themselves as a sniper. You know, you got a, a seven or eight year old grabbing this. They love it. And even younger because everybody can use this. It's light to prime. And there is definitely a place for this. I don't care that it's a single shot, bolt action. I don't care that it's going to take you longer to load and fire one shot. It's fun. And for a backyard Nerf War or around the house Nerf War, this is all you need. And it's hard to go wrong with it. And Busby has had a home run in providing a fun and easy to use blaster to get people started. And maybe some of them get hooked and end up becoming people like like me right here with a, a hobby or obsession <laughs> maybe just maybe this might be the starting point and that that's something that is much much needed even over all the best performing blasters that are out there something like this is needed even more so the busby demolisher this is something i was i had mixed feelings with my initial review 
and I may come back and do a three review of it years later. It's like, has my opinion changed? What can I, what can I fix? Because this blaster has both fun and annoying things about it. I'm not going to fire it right now. I, I didn't have it loaded up, but it takes any, any magazine that's Nerf compatible. This is actually a Nerf, Nerf 35 round drum. Normally what I use with it when I do use this blaster has a rotating front, front, uh, almost Gatling style barrel and you fire it has it it does have a shoulder strap you fire it by pulling back on this that's two stage pull it revs and then fires and then it's full auto with a, a lower fire rate but the problem is is this top grip the top grip is absolutely tiny and it, it's like you can get like two fingers in there and it's so close to the shell of the blaster that you pin your hand in and even younger users i had people i had my daughter try it my youngest daughter and even for her it was kind of a tight weird fit and then you have to brace and pull against this so what i always ended up doing was holding it here that's actually where the batteries go i would hold it here and fire it and then it becomes just a dart hose and it's it's kind of fun that way so this handle is just bad idea bad design and if you were to replace that with just a piece of like pvc with a couple of brackets to hold it on you, that'd be a far better idea easy fix if you wanted to do that i haven't done it because you know i do feature these in my blasters and videos here and there but the demolisher is still available i actually have one i bought up here in the box that's 25 dollars at dollar general but it's full auto but there's not much reason now, especially with those be themselves making the auto, Alpha Auto 72. This is magazine fed, yes, but the two and it has a two stage trigger through pulling this back, and that's that's fine. That's fine design. I didn't find that to be an issue whatsoever. But it's that handle, <laughs> that handles it is an issue, and some people don't like this pull. I didn't mind that because you know once you just hold like this and pull, then you can fire. And it's a little, it's a compact minigun. It's a mini minigun. So there is things to like and dislike about the Demolisher. But again, Busby, through the Adventure Force brand, has the Alpha Auto 72. Now that is a whole other video. I actually reviewed it on the channel, and you can go see that. Love that blaster. I will do a video going over all the Adventure Force blasters that Busby makes whole other video coming up here in about a week so stay tuned for that another little blaster that busby's had in this lineup forever and this was basically a competitor to the nerf triad and this one's still around it's also basically a scaled down busby wizard has the same rotating plunger tube design which again keeps the power between shots very comparable as in the first shot will be about the same as the second shot as the same as the third shot nerf smart ar system has decreasing power so number one shot will be full power second shot will be a little less and third shot will be even weaker but of course with the smart ar wherever you throw the dart in it will fire you just don't know how powerful it will be because it'll either be weak or strong depending on where you put it busby system be the same power no matter what barrel it is but you need to remember where you last fired or just make sure you reload the thing entirely but that's the busby gem three shots and with a comfortable little t-pull on the back and fun just simple simple little blaster again another one of those very very cheap sub ten dollar pistols that you can pick up sometimes singly sometimes in a two pack and it's also available in the adventure force lineup under another name and i'll get to that in another video that'll be in about a week or so now on Busby's website, you'll see the Dynablast that is also known as the Equalizer. The Equalizer being a six shot revolving blaster with a top prime. And it has a kind of old west revolver-esque look to it, but with that top prime. And they call it the Dynablast. That's the new name. This one's a couple of years past. I haven't got my hands on a Dynablast. It's one I want to get because I love the Equalizer and I only have the one you see this was also sold 
under the Walking Dead series as both Rick's and Carl's revolver. I have one of each of those, and they just had a couple little cosmetic changes, but same blaster. And it's a nice traditional revolver that has six shots, a very comfortable grip, and goes to show Busby can do a nice grip. I don't know why they don't always, but I still can't explain that, because like I told them, they need to take the grip off of Abraham's M16 out of the Walking Dead series and take that CAD design and stick it on everything. Or the Revolution grip. Either or. They're both good. They actually took my advice and put that Abraham's M16 grip on the Easy Fire. So, kudos to them on that. This is also a very good grip. They could use this on all their pistols. Just giving them, giving them positive feedback, because... Just like with your favorite sports team. You want to take positive feedback to give them good ideas to move forward with if they listen. And thankfully, Busby does listen. As I finish out last shot here, this is one of the best revolvers on the market. Nobody talks about it except for me, but it is absolutely fantastic. If you like the six shot revolving pistol style blaster, don't look any further than the Equalizer, also known as the Dynablast. Go find one somewhere, wherever on the black market that Busby has these, go get one. And I don't know what kind of backdoor shady deals I got to do to get my hands on a Diamond Blast, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Sold under a number of different names. It's actually currently called the Night Assault. It comes with a light on top. I've misplaced mine. And I did spend quite a bit of time looking for it for the video. But it comes with a nice little uh, flashlight that goes on top of the tack rail. But it is a mag-fed top prime blaster with, unfortunately, a very small grip. Still a very good blaster, though. Because the small grip, despite being very small, like oddly, it's not horrible. I know that's it's weird. You can almost, like, completely encase it with your fingers. But it's not that, it's not that bad. I, and I'm not trying to, you know, make a consolation for it. It's genuinely not that bad. But it packs the punch of the Revolution. It's nearly the same performance in a slightly different looking profile. And very neat shell overall. Has a lot of, a lot of intricate details in the shell. But it's sold as the Lightmaster, sold as the Night Assault, or the Night Attack. That's the three names that it has been marketed under. And it is based off of who's carrying it. That's who's carrying it and the region it sold in. That's something you'll find out with Busby. And very solid mag-fed blaster. Not quite as good as the Revolution. You can hear the creaking. The Revolution is a much more solid shell. This one does creak. They all do. Every one of the, the Night Attacks, Lightmaster, Night Assault, they all creak a bit. That's the downfall of it compared to the Revolution. But... And that, that's also its downfall. It's made by the same company that makes the Revolution. So there's no reason to buy this over a Revolution unless you just simply cannot get it because they're about the same exact price. So downfall of this is that while good, it has something that's just flat out better made in this, the same company making it. So the Night Assault, Light Attack, light, this one's Light Master. You have the Night Assault and Night Attack. All three names, same blaster, same company, but the Revolution's better. There's your quick review summed up. Coming to the last of the Air Warriors series blasters is the Exterminator. Now this is a kind of a recolor of a reshell, but this is the best of both worlds in my opinion. The Busby, we're going to do a little history here real quick, 30 second history. Busby Tactical Storm was one of my favorite blasters that had a, a little bit undersized grip. It was brought out back around the whole Alex Brands redoing of Busby, and it offered mag-fed, top prime, with a little tiny rear stock, and an attachable barrel, meant to compete with the Nerf Retaliator. Well, that was brought back out as the Eradicator sold under the Adventure Force line, and they fixed the grip. They redid the stock a little bit, made it a little longer, but still not long enough. And then 
when they took that, for whatever reason, the Eradicator disappeared out of the Adventure Force lineup. Here comes the Exterminator. Now it's under the Air Warriors lineup, yet again, after the Tactical Storm had disappeared. So, roundabout, Tactical Storm to the Air Warriors Tactical Storm, to the Adventure Force Eradicator, to the Air Warriors Exterminator. This is one of the better top prime blasters, because now it has a comfortable grip, just like the Adventure Force Eradicator had, and it's available even cheaper. Yeah, that it is. I bought this one. This is actually a new straight out of the box. I bought this one for $15 at a local store. Not a sales store. Local store carries these for $15. Now, you can go get, also get them at Dollar General for a little more. I think they're $20 there. But $15 gets you two mags. And that's why I had the box here to show you. It's a kind of economical packaging. You get two mags. The one that's in here plus the one over here. Then it also gets 20 darts, so enough to fill the two 10-round mags, and the blaster with the barrel attachment and the stock. Good deal. $15. Oh, and these things can mod like crazy. You can get very good performance out of these with very little work. Because big plunger tube, magazine fed, simple design. You can put a, a new breech, do higher spring loads, whatever you want to do. And the sky's the limit. But... It also performs very well stock with around about 80 or so feet per second, straight out of the package. That's the Air Warriors Exterminator, which was the, it was kind of like the offspring of the Adventure Force Eradicator, which is the offspring of the Air Warriors Tactical Storm. Roundabout, roundabout, roundabout. <laughs> but Adventure Force, whatever to whatever you, know, you end up with the air warriors exterminator and you get a good blaster for cheap with double mags with extra darts with the barrel and the stock if you want to use it take them off if you don't want to and then it just be kind of a chunky pistol good blaster again one of those that's great for a family i mean imagine you go buy four of these at 15 dollars each that's 60 dollars, and you've got enough darts and enough mags to at least play for a bit without spending any more than that. Go try to find four mag-fed nerf blasters for $60. I'll wait. And wait. And you won't. Unless you go find them on sale. And that's what it takes. It takes them being on sale compared to this, what it sells at normally. And that's the, that's the power of it. And these outperform what nerf offers okay coming around to end on a couple of the walking dead series blasters there's only two that are still in production and available on retailer shelves i find them locally myself at dollar generals and that one of them is andrew's rifle it this one is not complete i've taken the scope off it comes with the same exact scope as the busby predator and it comes with a small magazine it is a bolt action magazine fed blaster that is one of the few Busby blasters I absolutely do not recommend. Somebody out there is going to be a fan of this. I am not one. It, I find this to be one of their worst blasters. And it stems from two things. Most, Some of the Andrews rifles, and most of them, have an issue with certain magazines. I don't know how to tell. I can't recommend something because some, some Andrews rifles won't work with certain magazines, while others will work with everything. And you can't tell looking in the package. So you might get stuck with one that only works with certain Busby magazines. I mean, even some Busby magazines won't fit this one. This one is picky. And I can't recommend something like that. It's That's just, I don't. Because this is meant to be like a family blaster. And you want to be able to use everything you have. You know, be compatible with everything else you have. And it's bolt action. And it's about $15. So it's a little more expensive than, say, the Busby Predator. And in my review of this, I ended with recommending the Busby Predator. And I still would. Because this thing is a convoluted mess ergonomically. If you go to, if you go to uh, try to hold this, you tell me how you're supposed to hold that. I've had this now all this time. I still don't know how to hold these. Nobody who I've tried and let borrow this, nobody finds a comfortable place to hold it. And I don't care what age. 
I've let everybody from eight years old and up try this. Nobody can find a comfortable place to hold this. And that's a problem. Because if I can't hold it comfortably, but a child can, okay, then it's just not meant for me. But if a child can't hold it, who is the intended audience and user of this, if they can't find it comfortable, problem. That is a big problem. Especially when everybody can find this comfortable. You know, it's just, you see the little thumb hole stock and you're like, oh, okay, I just stick my thumb through there. Sure, the rest of it's a little undersized. But if, this is a very lightweight blaster and you can just easily pull the trigger. This doesn't have that. I don't know why they didn't just simply take this and make it mag fed. This is already a proven design. Just extend the breech out a little bit further and put the magazine up here a little further and make a mag fed Busby Predator as Andrew's rifle. Instead, they did this whole other shell and it, it just, it's a flop. This is one of their worst blasters they've ever made, in my opinion. So, Andrew's rifle is one that's available, but I would not recommend it. However, one that you can find that's still from the Walking Dead series, still on the shelves, I bought this one locally, is Rick's shotgun. Now, I didn't, I didn't read the comics. I'm not a comic book guy. I watched The Walking Dead until it went and fell off a cliff. And Rick had a revolver. That was like his signature thing in the show. But Rick's shotgun, whether it's his signature black his signature choice in the show or not, which it wasn't. This is a Busby double shot that is remade. Feels a bit bulkier, a bit heavier duty, which is a good thing. It's a thumbs up. And it retains everything that made the Busby double shot so fun and so usable over all the years. This is an absolute home run. If you like the new style, and this shell does feel a little heavier duty. So if you like this, absolutely recommend it. I love the double shot, and this feels like a sturdier double shot. So, yeah. And on a positive note, I'm going to end holding one of my favorite blasters they've ever made. And Busby makes a lot of great blasters. And while they have made some flops, they have, in my opinion, and it, I am just a dude in front of a camera on YouTube, it is just my opinion. I think they have the best balance of both very practical blasters and then silly stuff that, you know, it, it might seem like a gimmick, but it's just silly fun. And they do it all while keeping very economical, easy to afford blasters for everybody. That, you know, even for us as people who take, the, take dart blasters maybe a little too seriously, and we tinker and we mod and we make things far above and beyond what they were ever envisioned by their, the engineers and the people in the R&D departments and in the, the sales force of these companies that we buy their products. For me, I absolutely love the people behind Busby and it makes me enjoy their products even more because they are genuinely some of the best people I've interacted with related to dart blasters. You guys know who you are. I know you watch some, or at least some of my videos, and I know one of them has, one of them left the company, and I hope she's doing well. She worked with me for years, but you guys there at Busby, I've absolutely enjoyed every interaction, and yes, it does make me more biased. I, I'm not going to excuse myself from bias. People who say they're not biased, they are the ones who are being dishonest. Everybody has bias. I like the silliness of Busby. I like the practicality of Busby. I like the economics where I can go buy these blasters and run this YouTube channel without going broke. Because I don't make money from Busby. I'm not paid. No, no company has ever paid me a penny. I have to buy these myself. So every blaster you see, I buy. And this is being $10 as my favorite blaster currently made is a big deal. So I can go buy five of them and tinker them and mod them up and paint to my heart's content and do hydro dips. So it matters to me. And they make a lot of fun and silly stuff. You know, everything from the little slingshots to <laughs> that blow blaster that came out at probably the worst possible timing point when there is something going on in the world where nobody wants to be breathing or coughing on anybody else. But yet here's a blaster that you blow into. <laughs> it's like, 
poor Busby. That they, that was a fun. It still is a fun little product, but it'll it came out at the worst possible time. But some of them have came out, stood the test of time. The snipe being one of those, the predator being another, the double shot being another. Others are flops. Andrew's rifle. I can't stand that thing. Absolutely can't. Not even gonna say sorry, Busby. The things I hate that thing. I I haven't found anybody that likes it, but. They make some things that are also home runs, even though they're underrated and overlooked completely. Some people even just call them champion reskins, which it's not. It's an evolution. Even though its name is Revolution, it's it's evolving it to a higher level. And it's the best top primer that's, in my personal opinion, the best top primer that's ever been made for full-length darts without being considered a pro blaster. And I'm going to leave off on that. Very positive note. I love Busby. Great company. Great company backed up by great people with a good customer service. They have things they need to work on. We need to get some new blasters. We need to get some good new blasters. And we need to get better availability. And I'm going to leave it there. Hope you've, hope you've not been bored to death by a very, very long video. But I'm leaving it like this. I'll do minimal editing. And hope that you stick around to find out a little more about the blasters that I enjoy, or or don't. <laughs> Some of them I don't, but I'll be honest in every one of them. We'll go forward next time. Will be Adventure Force blasters made by Busby, with a couple of little individual reviews scattered throughout. But till next time, it's Mongoose Shake saying, "Have fun flinging that phone," and thanks for watching.